So, I have a confession to make. I'm a science geek. If my outfit didn't give that away already. Now, I love numbers. I love manipulating them. I see the logic in formulas and theories. And don't even get me started on the mathematical implications of a Rubik's Cube. Fascinating. <laughs> so, that being said, uh, you can assume a few things about me. Uh, one, wow, this kid doesn't get out much. And you're right. Uh, two, uh, this kid is one of those people who loves to study in his free time. I mean, just as much as any other science major. And number three, uh, this kid is going to pawn off some scientific concept that's going to slightly impact my life. And see that last one? Yes, I am. But I promise it's not what you're thinking. So don't brace yourself for some overly scientific discussion because it's not that. Be that as it may, I do start with numbers for a specific reason. And that is that as important as numbers are, and as important as numbers are to me, they really are just an idea, a way for us to rationalize the world around us. In reality, they don't mean anything. The number one, two, three, four, five, they don't mean anything unless we give them meaning. Such a huge passion of mine, numbers is really just a concept developed by other individuals to apply a level of quantifiable understanding to our natural world. Albeit a bleak look at numbers, it is a reality, and it's one that we have to recognize. We also have to recognize that this frame of thinking is not uniquely specific to numbers. Now this, of course, brings me to the topic of my discussion today, and using this lens of sociological reality, let's take a look at a phrase that has become synonymous with the American way of life, something that we alone have provided meaning to. Let's take a look at the American dream, shall we? Today, I have three jobs. One, show that the American dream is not what it used to be. T two, prove that the American dream, as it stands today, does not hold true for everybody. And three, suggest an alternative. So, I see it necessary to take a look back to see how the American dream started and what it started as. James Adams' often repeated quotation echoes a sentiment that most people associate with this concept. The American dream is that dream of a land in which life should be better and richer and fuller for everybody with opportunity for each according to ability or achievement. However, it is what Adams went on to say that most people often get confused. This is not a dream of motor cars and high wages merely, but a dream of social order in which each man and each woman shall be able to attain to the fullest stature of which they are innately capable and be recognized by others for what they are, regardless of the fortuitous circumstances of birth or position. However, President Herbert Hoover successfully pictured a directly contrasting idea in his 1928 presidential campaign slogan, a chicken in every pot and a car in every garage. Historically, despite Adam's initial wishes, this dream has been about acquiring stuff. And for many people, it still is. It has recently come to my attention that the definition of the American dream or the merits upon which the dream is based has forced a divide in our nation's population. Half are determined to hold true their virtuous goals of being happy and content with themselves and their place in life, while the other half is determined to make a prosperous life, one often characterized by luxurious material possessions. Both of these populations are determined to hold true their beliefs, which often includes monopolization of the American dream. This stark contrast is extremely apparent in conversations with people, so I ask you, what does the American dream promise? Does it provide a sense of entitlement for luxurious material possessions, or does it simply allow for a life of happiness? Pondering that question, let's take a look at the modern American dream and its shortcomings. I'd like to repeat part of the Adams quotation. Regardless of the fortuitous circumstances of birth or position. Now this is the part where I bring up those meaningless things again. Uh, what were they called? Oh right, numbers. African Americans are three times as likely 
to be born into poverty than Caucasian children. Institutional poverty, a term that refers to the likelihood of an individual born into poverty to remain in that financial status, is significantly higher for those of the African American race. In fact, in, the, in comparison to Caucasian individuals, African Americans have a 19.6% higher chance of remaining in an impoverished state. That means that not only are African Americans three times as likely to be born into poverty, but they also have an almost 20% higher chance of remaining in that impoverished state. Additionally, when charged with the same crime, an African American male is six times as likely to be charged than a white male. In spite of being only 12% of our nation's population, African Americans make up 38% of our nation's arrests for violent crimes. And most disheartening of all, African Americans are three times as likely to be the receiving end of police force. Now, when I say the names Michael Brown, Trayvon Martin, Freddie Gray, people's first instinct is to become uncomfortable and avoid the heart of the discussion at all costs. We need to realize that there is an innumerable amount of disparities in terms of race in this country. After all, the first step in solving any problem is admitting that there is one. Now, I realize that that section was fairly intense, but it needed to be. It gets to the root of the problem. And the conversation doesn't stop at race. Nearly every minority group in this country has statistical evidence to support the claim that the American dream, as it stands today, does not hold true for all. Americans. Now, even if you don't agree with me, even if you don't agree with the numbers, after all, numbers are meaningless, I need you to humor me for my remaining time. I need you all to agree, if only for a while, that the American dream does not hold true for all Americans. So let's check in on my jobs. Uh, One, show that the American dream is not what it used to be. Check. Two, Prove that the American dream does not hold true for all Americans. Done, so what's left? Three, suggest an alternative. Now, I'd like to refer back to the fact that um, I'm a science geek, and rightfully so, my view on the American dream can be described as nothing short of nerdy. Einstein's theory of relativity. Are you familiar? E equals mc squared, or energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Essentially, this concept successfully attempts to relate energy to mass, thus allowing for relativity, hence the name. However, I'd like to take a closer look at the specific parts of the formula. Energy, mass, and speed. I'd like to propose a new definition of the American dream using those exact terms. Well, see, science isn't worthless. E or the energy we must apply to our dreams if we are to become successful. Mass, or the masses of people to which the American dream is applicable. And speed, or the speed at which we are to expect the fulfillment of our dreams. Uh, Let me break this down a little further. Uh, E, energy, or the energy we must apply to our dreams if we are to become successful. uh, If earlier it came across as though I was attempting to blame the system for everything, I'd like to assure you that that wasn't my intention. I'm fully aware that a lot of the problems that my generation and struggling individuals across this nation have can be traced back to individual decisions that have hampered their paths. So it's a matter of establishing goals and sticking to them. It's directing our personal energies towards finding viable pathways that will actually be beneficial for our lives. It's bouncing back from traumatic experiences with a new sense of of energy and reformation. It's taking responsibility for your actions, both good and bad. It's finding that personal integrity, that, that, that high sense of morality that we are tasked to find. Oprah Winfrey defines real integrity as doing the right thing, knowing that nobody's going to know whether you did it or not. A contributor for Forbes magazine corroborates by saying, Success will come and go, but integrity, that's forever. To craft a success story, it really is a matter of finding a worthy path and then directing our entire personal energies to that path. So we've covered E. Uh, What's next? Um, M, or the masses of people to which the American dream is applicable. 
It was Emma Lazarus's poem, The New Colossus, that recognized these masses. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Immigrants flocking to a land of hopes and dreams, a place where the streets were paved with gold. Unfortunately, this vision was not reciprocated by reality. And it still isn't. America, as much as we make it out to be a haven, is still a country with flaws. It's not perfect, and, and that's to be expected. However, there are foundational flaws that inhibit certain divisions of the masses from reaching the success so promised by the American dream. A recent New York Times study suggests that those who believe in the promise of the American dream are often those who have already reaped its benefits. It's a really good time to talk about privilege. Now, as a white man dressed in nice clothes who attends a religiously oriented, expensive private college, I'm fully aware that I'm privileged, and I admit that. I also admit that I cannot directly relate to those tired, poor, huddled masses yearning to breathe free. However, I feel compelled to fight on their behalf, to use my privilege for the betterment of others, as we all should. Now, my definition of the American dream does not exist without resistance, without a, a fight to fuel its base, its base premise. We, as a college, as a community, as a nation, need to embrace inclusivity. Or to put it in simpler terms, embrace different. The American dream can still be found for the masses of the 21st century through a commitment to ensuring that no single characteristic defines us as more or less worthy. All right, so we've covered E and we've covered M. Where does that leave us? Speed, or the speed at which we are to expect the fulfillment of our dreams. My message today is one of both patience and perseverance. Now, I'm not in the business of making generalizations regarding my generation because I generally think that that's a really bad idea. However, I have found one thing to be fairly common of myself and of my generation, and that is our ever-present penchant for instant gratification. We want things fast. We want them now. Uh, this is obvious in our obsession with high-speed internet, click-and-play Netflix, and same-day shipping. Be let's face facts. Be forced to wait, and we become at least a little bit irritable. However, the reality is that good things come to those who wait. In fact, I it's necessary. The gold-plated streets, the, the good life, has statistically been specific to those who have attained a college degree. Despite questions of its worth, a college degree really does open pathways. Time and time again, we hear the story of the college graduate who struggles to find work or works at a job that he or she is highly overqualified for. If you can't find the dream job right out of college, that's okay. Rather than focusing on the dream job, we have to be focusing on living the dream life. It's okay to work a job that gives you fulfillment, even if it's not your dream job. That will come in time. In fact, that's the patience and perseverance that I'm asking for and encouraging here. If you can't chase the dream with the dream job, take another job. Work your way up, but most importantly, enjoy life along the way. So I'd like to uh, wrap up this discussion by putting my definition of the American dream all together. So I believe that the American dream is that dream of a land in which life should be better and richer and fuller for all races, genders, sexualities, and all other divisions of the masses, so long as they remain patient and perseverant with a strong understanding of the importance of hard work and the value of a viable path. So as cool and as awesome as that may be, I do want to bring an idea to the forefront, and that is that this really doesn't mean anything. Much like numbers, this is a concept, something that we have to apply meaning to, something that we have to live. Even if this were adopted, let's say, immediately, nothing would necessarily change. Life would still happen, problems would still be real, we would still be confronted with the same life choices. 
but it's how we respond to those circumstances that can transform our beings and our lives. After all, being resilient, perseverant, hardworking, these are cornerstones of the American way of life. The American dream, after all, is a dream, well, a dream worth living. Thank you.